Our next caller is Sally from Alabama. Oh, I know why you're all excited, Sally. Did you watch the game last night or what? Um, uh, I went to Auburn. So oh, really? Oh, really <laughs> okay. You went to Auburn, but you work at Alabama. No, yeah, I, I no, I'm a school teacher in Birmingham, Alabama, but I went to Auburn, and I can't stay. Like my dad went to Auburn, uncle went to Auburn. We're huge oh. learners. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot stand Alabama. Oh, so you're, I mean, so you're not in the celebration I, I love, mode. I do love Deontay Smith, though. I'll give it to him. He's an incredible player. Uh, okay, okay. So, <laughs> that's great. So what's your question? So my question is, um, I'm just trying to work on my physique a little bit, and I've always been into fitness. Um, and it is about, I didn't know if y'all could help me out with this, but sometimes with women they have, and it's not fat in the lower area. It's like pro- protruding abdominals in the lower abdominal section and I've tried I've heard vacuums work I've heard that it's supposedly weak transverse abdominus and I was like do y'all have any advice on that and how you can fix it or is it just something you're kind of stuck with that because I've seemed to always it's just gotten worse as I've gotten older Hmm. that's a really really good uh, question Sally are you a mother I'm not a mother. No, okay. I'm not. So this is more common uh, when women have a baby, mainly because the, the 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 abdominal area stretches and muscles atrophy, in particular the transverse abdominus. But it's not super uncommon. It's actually just, very common. Just generally, yeah. right? Because here's what happens. When you're standing, gravity pushes your organs down, and it pushes out toward, at the, the lower abdominal area. And so it makes people feel like they have a lower belly pooch, and they'll get lean, and they say, oh, why is this – kind of sticking out. And your best bet is to strengthen the muscles that pull in the midsection. You mentioned vacuums. That is a great mm-hmm. exercise. I would do them on all fours to add a little bit of resistance. But also, I would work on doing vacuums while doing core exercises. So normally when you do a crunch or anything else, you're not necessarily pulling the core in. You're just doing the movement. But I would recommend doing that as well to try to pull in the midsection while doing just to kind of tighten things up a little bit. I think this is a two prong too. I think that um, it's an area that we we tend just as humans to store body fat and it's one of the last places to go. Um, I experienced this when I was competing. It was, it tripped me out. I went all the way down to about 7% body fat, which was really, really lean for me. I'd I'd never seen myself that lean Uh, yet. I still had this like little bottom pooch that I couldn't figure out. It just didn't make sense to me. Um, I was leaner than what I was when I was in high school as a kid, yet I, I have this this bottom pooch of fat that I can't seem to get rid of. And it took me to put on some muscle, lean out again, put on some muscle, lean out about three times of staying consistent with my training and diet and building and then cutting back down and building before I finally kind of eliminated that. So you add in what Sal is talking about with the TVA and the organs and make sure you're doing that training and then also have a little bit of empathy with yourself. You know, we're all not, you know, 15 year old kids anymore and we've put on some body body fat over the years and that's probably just a stubborn area. And so that's why it's probably makes it seem like it's even worse. So the combination of those two things the transverse abdominus, and then also we store more body fat there. And then just sometimes it just takes Mm -hmm. a couple times of leaning out, putting on muscle, leaning back out to really eliminate it all the way. Sally, uh, uh, another question for you. Are you familiar with what an anterior pelvic tilt is? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. And I have read on that, that that could be a problem with it. And I don't have that. Okay, I've, so, gotten, I've gotten checked on that and I've done multiple in the test that y'all also recommend. And I do not have that. Okay. At all. okay. So, and, um, but I, at, but I also have been, I mean, I've gotten down to as a woman, this was way too low, but I've been 8% body fat and I still have, um, that area that, it, it it's it is not, it's definitely not fat. It is just like lower abs that stick out mm. a little bit, and it's only in that lower section. Okay, now you mind if I ask you a personal question? Yeah. Do you think you might be a little too harsh on yourself? Um. Yes. I I definitely believe that I I can't. I I have struggled with body dysmorphia before and an eating disorder and everything, but that is completely gone. I'm healthy. Got healthy menstrual cycles and everything, but it is 
um, like if I was to ever compete or anything like that, that would be an area that uh, I would definitely try to work mm-hmm. on because it is something that I do believe is does stick out a little bit and I could improve some way. Okay. So I'm going to go in a little bit of a different direction, Sally. I, I, uh, I myself uh, have struggled with body image issues in the past. I don't necessarily believe they completely go away. Um, I think it's always kind of in the background for most of us. I know it is for me. It can rear its ugly head every once in a while. And one of the characteristics of, uh, you know, body dysmorphia or even ha- or even experiencing it in the past and coming out of it is we tend to have this remarkable ability to be super critical of everything about our bodies. And we tend to look at ourselves as pieces rather than as a whole. And I've done this to myself where I'll look at one part of my body and it doesn't look the way that I want. And it's, you know, I, I can, I can focus on it and it becomes very challenging so here's, I'm going to change my advice for you, okay? Because you said a couple things to me that you've, you've been working out for a long time. You got down to 8% body fat, which for, for a man is lean, is shredded. For a woman is, is insanely shredded. So here's my advice to you. Um, and you could take it for all that it's worth. But I would say for you to focus entirely on performance, on strength, on speed, on mobility, and on stamina and completely ignore the aesthetics for a while. I would take your scale. I don't know if you use a scale. Put it in the closet. Stop weighing yourself. And I would stop, if you can, this is a challenging thing to do, but I would stop looking in the mirror and finding things that you need to change or work on and rather take that focus. And this isn't where you want to end up, but this is a great place to move your focus because it does help. It will help or it can help you become a little bit uh, different with this. Change that focus that you have from what you look like to your performance and start just journaling your workouts. Am I stronger? Am I faster? Am I lifting more? How do my joints feel? Do that for about four to five months and just be dogged about it. Be just hard-headed about it. And then four or five months later, go ahead and look at yourself in the mirror and see if you notice anything different. Well, I have, I have one more before. Okay, Sally, are you in our private forum? Am I in a what? Are you in our private forum? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay. Well, I'm going to give you access to that. So Doug, can we send her, uh, access to the private forums? You're on Facebook. Do you have a Facebook account? I do have a Facebook account. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to make sure Doug gets you access to the private forum. And in there is, it's a small community of, of people that have been listening to us since most of them, since the beginning, most of them gone through our programs and it would help if I actually saw you, right? So we're sitting here trying to speculate and, and guess based off of how you're describing things. But I would love to see the way you move and the way it looks on you because one, Sal could be absolutely right. You could be just being really hard on yourself and you probably look phenomenal. Or it could be something mechanically going wrong. Like we could see the way you squat or move and maybe there's something there that we can help out with. Uh, but I agree with Sal, like not focusing, being so hard on yourself. If you're someone who's been all the way down to 8% body fat, I bet you look pretty damn good. So I, I don't I don't think it's that. I think it might he might be right. There might be something a little bit there where you're probably a little harsh on yourself. But there also could be something going on movement-wise that we could potentially help you with. And in that forum, there's a, a, just a collection of people like ourselves. We're in there. We've got a lot of PTs, doctors, nutritionists, therapists. Everybody's in there. And if you come on there and kind of share what you're going through, either there's probably other people that have also gone through that. And two, we can take a look at you and probably give you a little bit more advice. Oh, wow. That sounds great. Yes. Excellent. Awesome, Sally. Thank you so much for calling, Sally. Yeah, thank y'all for uh, helping me out. It was so good to talk to y'all. Thank you. Right on. Thank, thank you. you. That's a really hard one, dude. That's yeah, a tough one. A you know, it, it, it's you know, it's funny. You, and you 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 start listening a little bit to how she's talking about. Well, you, know, you what nailed she's it. With. You nailed it when when she said she's been down to eight percent and it wasn't body. gone. Then you okay? You 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 might be a little a little harsh, and I know it, what that feels like. Well, especially if she doesn't think that it's uh, body fat, because right. I've I've shared on the show many times. I mean, I've, that that blew me away. Like I thought it was the weirdest thing ever. I'd never seen that on my body before. But dude, eight percent for a woman's like three percent for a man. Yes yeah. and no, right? Like uh, K- Katrina carries her body fat percentage really low. It never made sense to me. Every time we've tested consistently, she's like around ten or eleven percent. And I mean, you see my girl; yeah. she doesn't look ten or eleven percent. Mm-hmm. So some people just their 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 body fat percentage will read lower like that she's one of those people so that doesn't quite tell the full story you know that just because she says she's at eight she's been at eight percent body fat 
Um, but the fact that she thinks it's not fat, yet something is sticking out and protruding, then that also makes me think of just like the way her her posture is. And she yeah, might just have I'm that. Thinking. And she might yeah. just have that structure, you know. Uh, right, right. That's women in particular, they'll get lean and they'll have the the lower. Uh, this is Jessica. Her lower abs will mm. come and then they'll come in down towards her pelvis. Right. And yeah. I find it, I think it's extremely attractive. It looks very That's why I want to see her, right? So yeah. that's part of why I'm like, get on the forum, let me see a picture right. because then maybe we can talk talk some sense into her if she does look phenomenal and it just literally is just She her. may just need reassurance. Yeah, it could be her anatomy. Yeah. We're yeah. all, we're all, I mean- you know, I remember when I was competing, I would uh, get so many guys that would be asking like how you develop this certain looking abs and everybody has like different abs. Yep. You've oh, got yeah. some people with these very- It varies all over the place. Yeah, blocky looking. Some people have abs that are like, uh, they're not lined up. So they're they're uh -huh. off, they're uh -huh. off on it. You know, and you just- I have one big one. I'm like, why yeah, was this one bigger? Yeah, and that's not, that's not something you're going to go train and change. It just could be your anatomy. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I'd like to look at her and mm -hmm. see if it's, if it's that or maybe it's more what Sal, you were alluding to, but yeah, I mean, the, the dark side of fitness is you really can get into it, and then you can get really critical of yeah. yourself and just break it yourself down. It can become down. an obsession. And you're never perfect. There's well, I think, you and you, I also think it was great that you addressed, too, that yeah. I don't think that it, it ever goes away for us. Like, it's always... It's, if it was an in, if it was something that created a a deep insecurity in us that drove us to body dysmorphia where we were mm -hmm. doing things to our body, I don't I think you can um, get beyond that. I think you can learn from that. But I think if if it was that much that it caused you to do things, mm -hmm. it's forever kind of yeah. there. Well, right? Tendencies will probably show. Yeah, up. it's. I mean, I know it's in the background always for me, and that's why I always like to kind of challenge it by like pushing myself the other direction to right. to, to to make sure I keep growing in that area because I know it's so deeply rooted. So. So, yeah, that's a tough one without seeing somebody and being able to look and, and assess ourselves. But I, I think you hit the right areas.